Hello everyone, this is Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today we're going to be looking at how I painted the Cyborg Mincher mech. So using my trusty Harder and Steambeck Evolution right now, I am applying uh, Burnt Umber from uh, Vallejo Model Air. Uh, so it's my first base coat, it's going to be for the rust to show through. So once the burnt umber was applied, I mixed a little bit of fire orange and uh, some other uh, reddish and orangey color to my base uh, color, which was the burnt umber. So I mixed the burnt umber and some um, some of those other orangey color, just to make you know the rust have some definition and some spot which is lighter and some spots that are darker. With this technique, you know you don't. There's really not a, you know a precise way to do it. You just go with your feeling. Just remember that darker uh, rust is older and more reddish orangey rust will be looking more fresh. Now I'll I gloss varnish the model and I'll be using AK Interactive uh, Light Rust as a filter. Uh, so I'm applying a wash yes but I'm using it as a filter to tie in all the rust color together. You need if you're using AK Interactive uh, washes you need to gloss varnish the model because these are enam enamel washes so if you don't do it it might damage your paint job after clear uh, after finishing the whole process now I clear coated the, the model flat and now I'm applying AK, AK interactive uh, Warren effect to the whole model. This is gonna help me create the, the chipping effect that you're gonna see later on into the model. Now once the, the AK Interactive stuff was dried, a time to go to the base coat. And basically uh, the first uh, color is P3 Iron Hall uh, as the base color, which is gonna be pretty much our shaded uh, our shade for this so we're covering the whole model and then after that we're gonna go in for the zenithal highlighting so the zenithal highlighting is done with uh, using a stone wall from Vallejo uh, so stone wall gray so which is a really whitey gray I really wanted to go with a, a more of a whitish color so basically I'm spraying from the top in a little bit of a 45 degree angle just to make sure that the, the parts that would receive light would actually get it. And now I'm just touching it up uh, a little bit more precisely. So just to give it even more pop, my last highlight that you can see me spraying right now, it's a little bit hard to see it, but I'm actually spraying some white uh, on top of the shoulder pad in some specific area where I want those areas to catch even more light just to give the model more depth into the color. So instead of having only two colors, it has three colors, shadow, main color, and then highlights. Okay, I'm sorry guys, here I did a little bit of uh, extra step off cameras uh, just because I was doing some tests, running some tests with uh, the AK Interactive stuff. I know the, inter the AK Interactive stuff works when you're doing a base coat uh, on top of the AK Interactive liquid, but uh, I wanted to know if uh, you have other coats, um, like for example, I did the AK, the, the wet, the rust like you saw in the video, then after that I did my base coat. Uh, no, I did the rust, then after that I did the AK uh, liquid, then I did the base coat. So here it worked perfectly, there's no problem whatsoever to do the rusting effect and the chipping effect. But then I wanted to know that if I would be doing the shoulder pads, which is another layer of color, and especially for the metallic areas, if uh, the rust would work on top of it or the, you know, the AK interactive stuff would still work on top of that. So I checked it out on a normal uh, piece of uh, where I actually applied some uh, silver and there was no problem and then after that I applied some wash on top of it to see if it would still be working and it works So this is where we are at now So basically now the steps that I'm gonna be showing you, you know, you didn't miss a lot of things I just you know painted these parts the engine the plates here and the little plates platey thing here in silver so nothing really crazy and then I applied some wash over it. I didn't even do the highlighting that's going to be at the end once the rust uh, rusting effects is all done. So basically now we're going to move on to the next step. 
which is gonna be uh, base coating all the first layer of gold which is a start of copper that we have right here so I'm, we're gonna do on camera all the gold detailing and then after that once this is done we're gonna move in into the chipping effect okay time to start the gold detailing so basically what I'm doing right now I'm using bright bronze uh, no, this one is Brassy Bronze, which is the darker bronze from Vallejo uh, Game Color. And I'm actually going to cover all the areas that are going to be gold. I start with the bronze say, basically simply because it's a really nice color for shading gold. So if you start from, uh, like you're going to see, I'll explain it a little bit later on in the video, how I did the true metallic metal uh, for this model. it's time to do the second shoulder pad so I mask uh, the areas around the shoulder pad as you can see you don't need to put masking tape everywhere where you're gonna be painting the model you know if you're pretty precise with your airbrush and you don't start spraying like a maniac having just a little bit of, uh, of, um, of masking tape like that you're still gonna be able to cover and it's not gonna overflow somewhere you don't want it so basically just be precise and don't spray like a maniac everything's gonna be fine So we did our rust color, then after that we flat cleared coated and we did our base color for the model. Now it's time to make that rust show up. So we're applying water and the water is going to loosen up the, the acrylic bond because of the AK interactive stuff that's underneath it. And if you, if you scrape it with a cocktail stick and if you scrape it with a cotton bud like you see me doing right now, it's going to create some chips. That's as simple as that and you're going to have really, really, really realistic chipping effect because it's actually chipping the paint right now. Okay, a little bit of an update of what happened off camera. First of all, I finished the, the paint chipping, as you can see. So paint chipping uh, happened pretty much everywhere on the body itself. Um, and then the first step for the true metallic metal was started here on the main body, uh, main plate here and on this leg. Uh, so I'll do the the first step on this one right now in the next segment and after that I'll um, finish the true metallic metal on this one since it's already to step two so that's why I did these three to be able to do the first step on this one and then after that being able to show you guys uh, the second step right away on this one but it's a uh, really easy uh, to start with but it's because with the first step we need to wait until it dries so uh, we'll be able to, s to jump on the second step right away so let's go see that Okay, I will do this part of the video uh, not in fast forward because it's a little bit tricky and some people, you know, really want to know how to do true metallic metal or at least uh, my attempt to do it. So basically what I did is I started with a brass, um, brass, brassy brass uh, color as a base coat. And what I did is I mixed a little bit of glorious gold, maybe like one, two to one. 2-2 two, two of glorious gold and one part of uh, brassy brass and now I'm applying it to my paintbrush right now and uh, I'm preparing the paintbrush to do a, a dry brush so basically what I want to do is I want to dry brush the bottom part of this um, crest why am I going for the dry brush on this part is because I want the brassy brass to still show through but I want to be able to create a nice transition from the brassy brass to the pure uh, glorious gold here on top. So the first step is just to dry brush this area which is the bottom part which will obviously get less light. Once the dry brushing is finished for this part what I want to do is take some uh, brassy brass and glorious gold mix that I just did and I want to go in and paint uh, full. Uh, color Just adjust my light. I want to paint the full color of brassy um, glorious gold and brassy brass mix on the top part of the model itself 
So, because, you know, blending metals is really hard. Uh, if you want to do wet blending, things like that, it doesn't really, because of the pigment nature, it's something that's really hard to achieve. Or at least if it's, it's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's doable, but it's just that I didn't, I don't know how to do it. So, basically this is the way I do it. So once the gold color is applied here, then it, it looks a little bit nicer. Um, but still the transition is pretty harsh. So what I like to do is with this brush, which is a little bit more heavy on paint. Now I just want to go and, and brush off the transition but not fill in the whole area so basically I will create a transition in between both the pure one the here a little bit more heavy dry brush and then here the just standard dry brush so this is gonna create a smooth transition I'm not sure if you see it well or maybe you see it a little bit better on to these ones but there's gonna be a picture at the end of the model it's gonna be making helping you um, realize or figure out a little bit more what it looks like then once this is done basically the thing that you want to do is you want to apply some washes to the bottom uh, apply a wash everywhere but apply some washes more heavily to the bottom which will create uh, this transition here as to uh, this area here being more uh, this area being more shiny and this area being more dull down and more blackish maybe you're gonna have to apply two coats of, uh, of wash in this area until you have a, a nice transition that you are happy with then you're gonna be pretty much set for uh, for business so the next part into uh, to making this nice goal is to take your glorious goal which is pure I think the, the, the glorious goal unmixed you want to tin it down of course and you don't want a lot on your brush itself and then after that what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go get your uh, highlights so everywhere you want to have some highlights of the gold so for say now I want this part here to be really highlighted because it's, it's where the light is gonna hit the model the most just want to go here lightly that's why I don't apply a lot on my brush because I want it to be put down pretty lightly and then for the transition because it's still a hard transition in the shadow you're using your wash as a uh, what they call a fixer um, a fixer or a filter so by using your wash you're just gonna bring everything down together really easily so you want to work your your highlights all in these areas and make them look nice so what I'll basically do is I'll finish the, the gold parts everywhere on the model and then after that we're gonna go and move on to the next step of this build weapon time so super easy blue power weapon started with uh, midnight blue moved on to ultramarine blue then after that electric blue and finished it off with a tad of white um, on this model I'm using a plastic back to cover the whole model just because a normal latex glove is too small to fit this whole model into it and notice that in this video there's many techniques and I'm not going into specific about it if you want like for example the power weapon or the OSL that you're going to see a little bit later on to the video or many other techniques that I'm showcasing in this video you can go and I have individual technique videos in on my channel and you can look for it and you're going to be able to find it So mostly all of the model is finished so I re-cleared it with the gloss varnish and now I'm applying again the AK interactive light rust effect onto the, all the metallic part on the model. Also as you can see I'm going in for some areas that are not metallic in, in, in a certain way but that would actually have a little bit more rust so the articulation of this model which are the leg joints and also now I'm going back to the metallic so 
just to give a little bit of a, a nicer look rust wise Okay, last update on the Cyborg Mech. There's a couple of things I did off camera because of the simple fact that it required me to do some detailing things and I had my battery problem with my camera and deadlines and whatnot, so I couldn't do everything on camera. But basically, I finished the red parts, put the head of the guy inside, but you can really, really almost not see it. Um, put the cap here, which is red. I did the scratch on that thing. Uh, I have the knee pads this one comes with knee pads right and technically the knee pads goes like so like this but when you look at it like now I think that it looks really nice and you know by adding the knee pad I think the knee, knee pad protrudes out a little bit too much for my taste and I think it actually doesn't look that good so I'm gonna scrap the knee pad and I won't put them on I'll send them to my client and if he wants to put them on he will be able to put them on they are painted but I just didn't want to do it uh, last little thing I have to put on this bad boy is this thing here that we're gonna glue really really soon but that's pretty much it everything else is done um, the only thing that we have left to do is do the burnt mark on the gun and now what I'm gonna do right now is the OSL on the power claw and after that I'll just have to finish the base up and this bad boy is gonna be out uh, the base is pretty much gonna be uh, snowy looking uh, a little bit like my storm falcon uh, early snow or early winter end of fall so there's you know this is fresh snow on him he was walking in the snow and there's gonna be a couple of winter leaves um, there's gonna be a base the base that comes with it from sideboard that is not done but it's in the process here and there's gonna be a display base that's gonna go uh, on the center of it here so this base fits in the center so uh, and there's gonna have some snow and leaves and everything so first up right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go, go do the OSL on this bad boy so last part of the bill, it's uh, including the OSL or making the OSL. So I'm using really, really diluted uh, electric blue. Then I'm applying it into the areas where the OSL would normally be and reflecting. And I'm doing a little bit of gradient into that with using some midnight blue mixed in with the electric blue. Not right now, but a little bit further on. But basically that's pretty much it. I'm sorry guys if I don't show all the steps that are in this video. It's like it was a really big video and I, I'm really busy at the moment. So, you know, like taking the time to make these videos are, it's extremely time consuming. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it still could help you a little bit. If you do have some question, just feel free to ask. Uh, it will be my pleasure to answer it. And I will see you guys on the next video.